Okay, let's take a quick look at a couple of these patents that are on that gas meter transmitter. So this is the first one from mid-90s. So if we look here at the diagrams, here's a simple block diagram of how these things are set up. So this was probably one of the earlier generations of this where they had a mobile truck that would drive around and then would pick up signals from some number of gas meters or houses. So here you can see here's your truck radio transmitter on the meter. This one's showing an electric meter but a little later we'll look at a, the same diagram for a gas meter. But what they have here is this thing called a pulser which generates pulses off of the utility meter on some sort of regular basis like one rotation of some dial most likely. They probably put a magnet on a rotating part of the meter and then those pulses get sent into a little microcontroller inside of the smart meter or automated meter reader. They accumulate those counts and then there's a real-time clock inside and a crystal oscillator. If we look on the next diagram here, here are the various meters this shows four of them and then what they do is they wake up at random intervals here so this S period is the transmit interval so the first meter wakes up transmits a pulse of data then the second meter wakes up transmits a pulse and the idea is they use random intervals to try to ensure that these meters don't conflict with each other and let's see here's a diagram showing here might be an array of houses and then this is showing a receiver on a utility pole picking up some number of houses from the from the local area and so what they mention here it's a low power transmitter and about one milliwatt transmit power and around 950 megahertz and let's see one other thing down here they talk about this clash is when you have a coincidence of transmissions from more than one meter module. They can detect when multiple meters transmit at the same time, but the idea is the meter might only transmit for five milliseconds. And I believe these meters do about four transmissions a day. So you might have, like they say, a thousand meter readings per day, and you might have 25 clashes. They're able to sort that out. And let's take a look at the next patent here. And I'll put links to all these patent descriptions in the video description if you want to look at them a little more detailed. So this was a little bit later in the 90s. And then this one shows a little bit more of the fixed system, which is, I think, what they have now. So here's your houses with meters, and then you've got what they call data accumulators, and these would be on utility poles, most likely. So there's a data accumulator, a modem, and a cell phone, or some sort of wireless communications back to the control computer and utility billing computer and they show here that you could potentially have meters that can reach multiple data accumulators and they show these data accumulators on about a one mile grid so you've got about a mile or 1.6 kilometers and then a whole bunch of houses and then here's the same block diagram with the gas meter the pulser your microprocessor and then of course with the gas meter you have a battery to power it. Yeah this is just a block diagram of the data accumulator. This one is set up with a solar panel and battery charging unit but I think some of these like a one I found in the neighborhood it's line powered and I think that's it. Let's go look at there's one other patent. This one was referenced in the first patent and this is what's called the pulser. So apparatus for communicating utility usage from a location to a portable registering device. And this one was back in the 
early 80s. So I think what they started with, these were like a handheld device that you could touch up against a meter. So here's your utility meter and this revolution detector is probably something like a magnet on a rotating shaft and then you've got a coil or a Hall effect sensor that picks up the rotating shaft and then it goes into a electronics device and then there's a coil and you have another coil this would be for a, a handheld meter reader so you could just come up with the, this device and touch or come close to the meter and it would automatically read the value of the meter versus somebody having to hand enter all the the numbers so I think this is what they used to use in the 80s and then they've just left this coil and then they've just bolted one of the smart meter or automated meter readers on the outside so that is the electronics and one of the things they're using here is they use these lithium thionyl chloride batteries. I think the ones they're using are from Tataran. These are like really impressive batteries. Excellent shelf life, 10 years, less than 1% self-discharge, long-term use with low current. And if we look at these here, let's see, where was the one? Oh yeah, so down here, just as an example, here's a D cell battery, just like your old flashlight used to use. 19 amp hours in a D cell. That's pretty impressive. Now these are primary batteries. They're not rechargeable. And these batteries can last 10 plus years in one of these meter readers without being changed or yeah, these are these are some really impressive batteries and I remember back I worked for a company that did CMOS battery backed up memory boards for industrial applications and we use these Tataran batteries for the really high lifetime, you know, like 10 year plus backup times. And at the end here I will uh, cut in a couple of pictures of what I think is one of these data accumulators. I found this box which looks like one of these data accumulators or DCUs on a streetlight pole about a third of a mile or half kilometer from my house and the antennas are about two and a half times longer than you see on a Wi-Fi access point and this is a line power yeah, box. Yeah and this is the Aclara website they're showing one of their water and gas DCUs, so data collector unit. And that looks almost identical to the box that's on the light pole. There's even the label down here. I didn't get a look at the back side of it. It's in somebody's yard, so I didn't want to go into their yard to look at it. But on the side, it looks exactly like this. Yeah, so I spent a uh, quite a while trying to find this unit. This is the only one I've found in the local neighborhood. That's probably the box that my meter transmits to. Various kinds of communication, cellular, Wi-Fi, Ethernet, fiber optic. So they're, they sound like they're a very flexible box. That is the data collector unit that my meter probably transmits to. Yeah, I'll put all these links in the video description if you want to look at them in, in more detail. If you have any questions about these, uh, post up in the comments section below. And if you know any of the technology, know anything about the technology, feel free to share that down below. And as always, thanks for watching.